Yo, what's going on guys? It's Cynical and welcome back to another video. Today for you guys, I have quite the interesting one as today I wanted to go through some tidbits from the Kingdom Hearts before Kingdom Hearts 3 Ultimania book as just recently this was released in English which is something that almost never happens with Kingdom Hearts Ultimanias. In fact, I do believe that this is the very first officially published English issue of a Kingdom Hearts Ultimania. This in itself is quite a big deal because literally every single version of Kingdom Hearts has received its very own Ultimania book which is sort of a compendium of sorts, but it's a massive issue that talks about specifically that Kingdom Hearts game in itself. It's comprised of a lot of need-to-know type information in the ways of the gameplay as well as the story, and also contains generally some interesting interviews from behind the scenes process of actually developing that said game. Sometimes the developers talk about stuff that they ended up leaving out of the game, original concepted ideas. This one here though is specifically talking about all of the Kingdom Hearts games leading up to that of Kingdom Hearts 3. And while this Ultimania has been out for quite some time in Japanese, I believe it released back in 2015, it's finally nice to get an English version. Although these tend to do get translated at least in the more interesting aspects this means now we can properly read through the entire thing. These 10 little tidbits are either facts that we don't really know so much of or give us more insight towards stuff we already know. First up is keyholes. Did you know that each world's keyhole is invisible to the average Joe and that only Keyblade wielders can see them? It's explained in the book that when Riku is a child, he goes through the bequeathing and gains the ability to see keyholes, which are invisible to others. Of course, this does explain that scene of Riku as a young child on Destiny Islands in the secret place with the door with the keyhole on it, because at the time, uh, this is after the events of when he was bequeathed by Terra. This meant that obviously during Sora and Riku's time as children, when they would spend time in the secret place, Riku could always see the keyhole on the door, but Sora couldn't. As of course, Sora didn't become a Keyblade wielder until the very beginning events of Kingdom Hearts 1, when he was at the age of 14. It does also say here that the keyhole of a world's hearts is normally hidden, but it shows itself if a Keyblade wielder is held aloft. So we've had many instances of being obviously with people whilst of course sealing or unsealing keyholes for different worlds. And I'm sure that if a Keyblade wielder actually activates a keyhole, it is then revealed to anyone standing around them. But it's quite funny, it makes you think that perhaps maybe at some point Riku asked Sora as a child, I wonder where that massive key is to the door in the secret place. And of course Sora just would have been scratching his head, completely unaware as to the fact that there is literally a massive keyhole in that door. And speaking about Keyblade bequeathing, it is confirmed in this book that you do not need the official title of Master in order to bequeath someone with the Keyblade, handing down the Keyblade's powers. Now we pretty much already knew that this was a thing, right? Because of course, if not, that would mean that Riku wouldn't be a Keyblade wielder, as of course Terra was the one that bequeathed Riku. However, at the time, we do know that Terra failed the mark of mastery and isn't actually an official master. It's one of those things that don't really need concrete uh, confirmation to a degree because it's clear it's right in front of our eyes, but it's still nice to read this information and to get a confirmation. It says right here, only a Keyblade Master or someone power equivalent to one can perform bequeathing or take out their own heart and transfer it to a different body. So meaning that if your power equivalency is that to a Keyblade Master, then yes, you are already at the stage and have ticked the boxes for the requirements to pass down the power of the Keyblade to someone else. Meaning, of course, at this stage in time, even though Sora isn't an official master, I would 100% say that he has the power equivalency to that of a Keyblade master and would be able to pass down the power of the Keyblade. As it also states here too, the power of being able to transfer one's heart into something else is also possible as well without being a Keyblade master. Next up is an interesting little tidbit towards nobodies, and honestly, this is a piece of information that has slipped under my radar. I'm unsure if it is mentioned at some point throughout the Kingdom Hearts story, uh, but it is mentioned right here and it's something that I wasn't aware of. So uh, let's look at this. It says right here, uh, in contrast to a heartless, a heart that progressed into darkness, nobody consists of body and soul that have separated from their heart. 
Of course, we know the basic explanation towards a nobody, but here's where it does get interesting. Although emotionless, they have memories and intelligence, and they're capable of acting in groups, however, their existence is indefinite, and if left alone, they'll eventually dissolve into the darkness. So it would seem that nobody's absolutely relying on being in groups. Uh, you never would have expected it, but it seems as if nobodies rely on that social atmosphere. This certainly gives more purpose to that of the Organization 13 for that group of nobodies, more specifically the stronger ones that were able to retain their human forms, as the same also does apply to the human-based nobodies as well. Next is an interesting tidbit from the description of Kingdom Hearts 2 Sora's design. It says right here how he looks one year after his first adventure. The dominance of the color black in his outfit gives an impression of slimness, and he has well-defined facial features. His hair is lighter because his other self, Roxas, joined back with his body. Now, the comment here made towards the use of the color black to imply more slimness towards Sora totally makes sense. This is actually a known thing with the color black. And the slim factor, of course, now that he's one year older, he is getting slightly taller. So to put sort of emphasis on that growth factor, they've gone with the color black. Totally makes sense. But one thing that I didn't know is Sora's hair is actually slightly lighter than it was in Kingdom Hearts 1 due to Roxas joining back with his body, with the fact that Roxas, of course, had blonde hair. Titus, Walker, and Selfie's age, kind of. So the book has a little bit of a blurb here for these three characters, of course, Sora, Riku, and Kairi's friends on Destiny Islands, who they grew up with. It says right here that Selfie in Kingdom Hearts 1 is 13 years old, and Selfie in Kingdom Hearts 2 is 14 years old. Uh, sort of interesting considering the fact that at the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 1, Sora is 14, Kairi is 14, Riku is 15. While we don't get the exact age for Titus and Waka, it is explained that Waka is the oldest among the children living on the islands, implying that yes, he is even older than Riku, most likely around the age of either 16 or 17. I would say likely 16. Titus would probably be a very similar age to Sora or Riku, so he would be anywhere from 14 to 15. I think this is one of the cool things about Kingdom Hearts, is seeing different versions of these well-known and beloved Final Fantasy characters when they do make their way into this series. What we're seeing right here are significantly younger versions of those three Final Fantasy characters, as Titus and Selfie are 17 in their respective Final Fantasy games, and Waka is 23. Here's an interesting little slice on Blindfold Riku and the purpose behind the Blindfold. While we pretty much know for the most part as to why Riku uses the Blindfold, and even within the games, Riku did say something along the lines of, the reasoning behind the Blindfold is so that his eyes don't lie. It's nice to get some further clarification towards which. It says right here, the reason for the blindfold is because he's deceiving his own heart to act as an inhabitant of the realm of darkness. As we do know at this stage, Riku still had darkness possession from Anson, and the blindfold acted as a ways of locking away that darkness so that he wouldn't reveal his true darkness form, that being Anson, the seeker of darkness. We know that if he takes his blindfold off, he takes the form of Anson, the seeker of darkness. Uh, enabling his use of strong darkness-based powers. This is exactly what he does to take on Roxas outside of the memory skyscraper in Kingdom Hearts days. The mysterious voice that is talking to Sora at the very beginning of Kingdom Hearts 1 during Sora's dive to heart on the stained glass pillars is in fact King Mickey. It was thought of for quite some time before this Ultimania dropping that Ventus was in fact the one talking to Sora but no, it is the king himself. It says right here, the one calling out to Sora in this scene was King Mickey. The king was searching for one of two keys, the Keyblade of the Realm of Darkness, that was needed to lock a keyhole in order to prevent darkness from invading through the door to Kingdom Hearts. While he was doing so, he anticipated Sora's departure through his dream and gave him advice. We have previously talked about how Riku from Final Fantasy X-2 was in fact going to be in the very first Kingdom Hearts game, but the idea to add her in was scrapped due to the overlapping in names with Kingdom Hearts' Riku. Of course, Yuna, Riku, and Pain from X-2 were then later on added into Kingdom Hearts 2 as little treasure hunter fairy type things, but there was actually a full-blown normal character concept art of Riku, 
that was going to be in Kingdom Hearts 1 that was added into this Ultimania. This is what you guys are looking at right now. Riku in a full-blown Kingdom Hearts art style. Uh, it's funny how Riku was chosen over someone like Yuna, considering Yuna is a more prominent character than that of Riku, but still cool to see this. While I'm sure this concept art has been floating around for quite some time, for me personally anyway, it's the very first time coming across it. It appears in the early stages of concepting, Sora was in fact going to have an air piercing. In this concept art right here for Kingdom Hearts 1, we can see that Sora has an air piercing of what looks like the crown symbol. So yeah, he was also going to be adorned with the crown on his ears as well. We do see that Sora did actually have a piercing in the very original concept for Sora back when he was a lion-human hybrid, but it seems like the idea of having Sora with piercings was followed through for a closer to finalized version of his design before removing the piercing. Honestly, I think the idea of having Sora with crown piercings is kinda badass. And last up, we still don't know the names of Vanitas and Young Master Xehanort's Keyblades. Now, you might be thinking, well, Vanitas' Keyblade is known as Voidgear, and Young Master Xehanort's Keyblade is known as No Name. I mean, after all, we are able to obtain both of these Keyblades in Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, right? Well, no, in fact, the Ultimania insinuates that the Keyblades that you obtain in Birth by Sleep that pretty much look exactly like Vanitas's and Young Master Xehanort's are in fact two separate Keyblades. Those are essentially just keychains, obviously. And that those names aren't the actual names for their Keyblades. For Vanitas's, it says right here, used by Vanitas when he wore his mask. By the way, the Void Gear that the Vanitas Remnant uses has the same design, only the colors are different. And for young Xehanort, it says the design resembles that of the No Name that Terra, Ventus, and Aqua can obtain in Birth by Sleep, but the handle and tip are somewhat different. Which is actually true, yeah, there is slight differences between the actual No Name Keyblade you're able to use in Birth by Sleep and young Xehanort's. The one in BBS is lacking the Eye of Darkness near the hilt, as well as what looks to be either like a sort of tiger or um, gargoyle type design at the very tip near the teeth of the Keyblade. So guys, that is 10 little facts and extra tidbits from the Kingdom Hearts, the story before Kingdom Hearts 3 Alter Mania. Hopefully there's some interesting stuff in there that you guys didn't know about. Again, I really do hope that this book ends up selling quite well to really push Square Enix to uh, continue to do English releases for these Kingdom Hearts Alter Manias, especially for the future of this series. These generally contain a lot of information that just goes completely unnoticed, and sometimes even information that isn't officially stated within the games themselves. So I think it is important going forward that we do end up receiving English versions of these books. However guys, I'm Cynical, hopefully you're having a fantastic day, and I'll catch you dudes in the next one. Peace.